The Fresh Prince gets therapized. What do you do when you feel or are unwanted and unloved by your own family? I'm Jonathan Decker with Mended Light. Let's dive in. Now, for those of you who aren't as old as I am and weren't around, The Fresh Prince was a sitcom in the 90s starring Will Smith. It's iconic, and today we're gonna break down the most iconic scene in the series. No, I'm not talking about the Carlton. When I see you. No, I'm talking about the episode where Will's dad comes back. So the show, as explained in the opening credits, a teenager from Philadelphia moves in with his cousins, his aunt and uncle in Bel Air. He's from the streets, they're upper crust, upper class, and uh, there's a lot of tension and conflict and most of it humorous between Will and his uncle Phil. Good night. Now, after 14 years, because Will was largely raised by his mother after his dad left, Will's dad reaches out, comes back into his life, and spends several days with his son, several fun-filled days with his teenage son. And Will is so hopeful. He always wanted a relationship with his, with his old man, and he felt for years that his dad left because of him, because he was unwanted and unloved and unlovable. And so connecting with his dad is, for Will, it's healing. So Will's dad is like, come stay with me. Let's go. Let's, let's go live together. Let's go cross country together. And Uncle Phil is trying to warn Will, your dad isn't reliable. Don't get your hopes up. And Will is very hurt and he lashes out at Phil, at his uncle. And then sure enough, on the day that Will and his dad are supposed to leave together, his dad changes his mind because he's got some money opportunity he's going to go chase instead of building a relationship with his son. So this is a bit of a longer clip, but it's worth it. Grab your tissues. This is at least a three hanky scene. Lou, if you walk out of Will's life now, don't you ever come back. Sit down. I ain't got time for no lecture. I said sit down, Lou. Also the voice of Shredder on the Ninja Turtles cartoon. Strong boundaries by Uncle Phil. You know, Will was doing just fine till you showed up. But now that you're back, you have responsibilities to him. Look, we're still gonna take the trip. Oh, bull! Bull! Will is not a coat that you hang in the closet, then pick it up when you're ready to wear it. His life goes on. He's not supposed to be here for you. You're supposed to be here for him. You get off my back! You think I want this? It just happened! Now, when Will was a baby, I was scared. Oh, Cut the crap, all right? Cut it! Because I've been there. But I didn't run out on my family. I was there every day for them, because that's what a man does. Fine, Philip. You win. You the man. You a better man than me. You happy? Now, you gonna tell Will or not? I'm not gonna do your dirty work for you. I'm gonna pause this really fast. When he says, Will is not a coat that you can just pick up and put on and then hang it up whenever, whenever you're done with it. You know, that he's not supposed to be here for you, you're supposed to be here for him. Maybe some of you watching today feel like your parents see you as you're supposed to be there for them, or it's a relationship of convenience, or maybe it's not a parent. Maybe it's a person you're dating. Maybe it's someone you're married to. Maybe it's a friend or a family member, and it hurts. Let's keep watching. Fine. Uh, I'll call him from the road. Yeah, then why don't you do that? Yeah, I'll do that. Daddy O! What's up? Will. <laughs> Damn it, man, I'm glad you're here. Um, some business came up I gotta handle. So we're gonna have to put a, our trip on hold. You understand? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's cool. That's cool. Just for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. I understand. Yeah. He knows his dad's not coming back. <laughs> Maybe a little longer. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. Look, I'll, I'll call you next week and we'll iron out the details. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah, yeah. He knows. It was great seeing you, son. You too. Lou. Not calling him dad no more. Yeah. Yeah, um... Some strong writing on this. I'm sorry, Will. <laughs> you know what? Actually, this works out better for me. You know, the Slimmies of Summer come to class wearing next to nothing. You know what I'm Will, saying? Will, it's all right to be angry. 
Hey, why should I be mad? I'm saying at least he said goodbye this time. I just wish I hadn't wasted my money buying this stupid present. I'm sorry. I, you know, if there was something that I Hey, could you know do. what? You ain't got to do no, nothing, Uncle Phil. Hey, you know, ain't like I'm still five years old, you know? Ain't like I'm going to be sitting up every night asking my mom, when's daddy coming home, you know? Who needs him? Hey, he wasn't there to teach me how to shoot my first basket, but I learned, didn't I? Hey, I got pretty damn good at it, too, didn't I, yeah, Uncle Phil? Did. Got through my first day without him, right? Mm -hmm. I learned how to drive. I learned how to shave. I learned how to fight without him. I had 14 great birthdays without him. He never even sent me a damn card. To hell with him! I ain't need him then, and I don't need him now. Will. Will. Nah, you know what, Uncle Phil? I'm gonna get through college without him. I'm gonna get a great job without him. I'm gonna marry me a beautiful honey, and I'm having me a whole bunch of kids. I'm gonna be a better father than he ever was. And I sure as hell don't need him for that, because ain't a damn thing he could ever teach me about how to love my kids. How come he don't want me, man? If you are unwanted, unloved, or you are loved, but they're doing a terrible job showing it, whoever they is, they are. You, like every other person on this planet, are a beautiful creation with strengths and weaknesses. And your, weak your weaknesses don't cross out your strengths, and they don't make you have any less worth than anybody. Your worth is set. Your worth is eternal. And no one can take that away. Some people fail to see it, some people fail to show it. What I love about this and how they hug at the end is recognizing that sometimes family is the family that you choose, it's the family that you find, it's the family that you create, it's your community. You don't need to change or be different to be accepted. Now, I'm not saying there's a difference between changing to be accepted and growing to be a better person and to better you know, serve and connect and love with other people and, and to love yourself more, but you don't need to change to be accepted. It's about looking for the people who see you, appreciate you, respect you, and want you. That's your family. And if it's not your blood family, I'm truly sorry, but you can still find it and you can still create it. In my opinion, the best way to start, if you're lonely, if you're sad, if you're hurting, is to look for other people who are lonely, sad, and hurting, and introduce yourself, or show concern or interest in their lives. Look for solutions to, with them if you can find them, and if not, just be there for them. I had a, my parents were great to me. I, did, I didn't have this problem. My older brother, with whom I'm very close now that we're grown men and, and mature, but when we were kids, he was, a, he was bully, he was awful. I was bullied horrifically all through elementary school, through most of middle school. I tried on a lot of different groups trying to see where I, where I fit in and I acted like those groups just because I wanted to belong somewhere. Then I realized, you know what? I'm sad, I'm lonely. And I see these kids who are sad and lonely sitting, sitting at lunch and I started to just like talk to them, started to make friends with them, started to form, and we started to form this group. This group snowballed from a handful of people at the beginning of high school to 250 people. <laughs> we had a huge group at the end of high school, big group of kids, because people wanted to stop pretending. We were very much come as you are. And you know, a lot of people helped me to create that. I loved high school because I had a lot of close relationships and I had a lot of close relationships because I created a community and a family. And not just, I don't wanna say I created, we created a community and a family. Uncle Phil becomes Will's, I mean, their blood family, but basically becomes Will's father, his father figure. If you don't have the home that you want, the family that you want, if you don't have the love that you want, don't give up. So this has been Fresh Prince Gets Therapized. I'm Jonathan Decker with Mended Light. Uh, if you enjoyed this, I wanna invite you to check out Jim and Pam from The Office Get Therapized. Uh, it's another real tearjerker. Um, actually, I bawled in that video. Um, very got very vulnerable on camera, so enjoy that. Uh, if you like what we're doing here at Mendelite, please like, subscribe, click the bell, share with your friends, and please shine your light to the world because we need it and so does everybody else. I'm Jonathan Decker. I'll see you next time. Here comes Jim and Pam. Pam and Jim. Pam Beasley and Jim. PB and Jay. Oh, what a waste. What a waste.